Hello. Can you hear me okay? Welcome, welcome. Can you hear me? Today we are talking about asset management. Can you guys hear me? I'm trying to. All right, you can hear me okay? Sweet. So we're going to talk about asset management today. Where's everybody viewing from? Can you get me a uh, thing to wipe this with, please? Um, let me go to my comments over here. Where can I see my comments? There we go. All right. Office cold calling. All right, Roy, at the uh, tree prop office. All right. So we're going to we're going to be talking about asset management today. Uh, buying deals is is really good. Uh, I'll give you a little little background and a little hear me loud and he, loud and clear. All right. So uh, Matt and I. Matt's been investing in real estate. Uh, he got started before I did, uh, but Matt and I together, uh, we've been investing in real estate since, uh, I think the first deal we bought together was in 2018. It was a uh, single family home in Austin. Uh, we bought it for like 139,000 give or take. And, uh, and that was the first rental. And then year two, uh, we bought a, another single family home. We bought, uh, this one was in Austin as well. Um, and we bought that one in September of 2019. Then in 2020, we bought a triplex, a eightplex, uh, a duplex, another single family home and probably one or two other properties. And then 2021, we bought a lot of deals. Um, and this year, uh, we, we bought a lot too. And for the first couple of years uh, investing, uh, really our motto was buy the deal, send it to property management, get more capital, buy the next deal. Uh, buy more deals, buy more deals, buy more deals, buy more deals, buy more deals. We're heavily focused in buying more deals, uh, but not. Um, we never would look back and say, okay, we bought these five deals. How do we maximize the rents? How do we minimize operating expenses? How can we get better debt on these properties? Uh, we're solely focused on buying more deals and uh, getting more capital, making more money to go buy more deals. And uh, we did fine. We, uh, we had a property management company that we trusted and we would just send them the property and we would basically forget about it until we had to file taxes uh, or, you know, there was some issue that property management reached out to us about, but we never really uh, managed the asset properly in my opinion. And uh, I think that that was, 
I don't think that that is the best strategy. Uh, it served us really, really well. And we've bought in, uh, a lot of properties because we were solely focused on buying more. But it doesn't require that much effort uh, to actually oversee the asset and properly uh, manage the asset well. And so recently, uh, I've taken a, a heavier role in managing the asset. Um, keeping good records on the property, uh, seeing what we can do to get better debts on the properties, um, meeting with the property managers and making sure that the property managers are managing the properties properly, uh, and really just taking a bigger role in managing the assets. And I think that this is really important uh, to maximize uh, the net income that you're going to make on the properties, minimize the operating expenses and any headaches that'll come from it. Uh, and I mean, you know, this is a, a lot of money that we invested in these properties and, and we need to be overseeing them uh, correctly. So I wanted to talk through the importance of, of doing that today. I want to talk through kind of what we are, are doing to manage uh, the assets and would love to hear uh, your feedback, hear what you're doing hear what your thoughts are, uh, and just kind of go from there. Uh, so basically what we've been doing is, uh, for, all, for all of you who uh, have been following us for a while, y'all uh, may know uh, this good-looking guy. His name's Andrew Roberts. A anybody here know Andrew Roberts? Uh, well, Andrew has recently uh, moved out of marketing I know it. he's not behind the camera right now uh, recording this video and he's moved over uh, working uh, directly with me and more, you know, uh, more closely on the asset management side of things. And he made this transition uh, December 1st and we've made a, a lot of a lot of progress since then. But some of the things that uh, we've been working on is uh, keeping Good and accurate data. So, what are our current? Uh, what's our current principle on all of our loans? We've got eighty-nine different units, and some are single family, some are duplexes, quadplexes, small commercial, uh, mobile home park, um, and so it's a lot of different properties and a lot of different loans as well. So, um, I want to know you know, what, what is the principal balance every single month for every single loan that we have? What is the uh, maturity date on these loans for these hard money loans that we have uh, acquired these properties with? When are they maturing? When do we need to start working on the refis? You know, last couple of months, if we could get away with not refining a property and hopefully if interest rates start going down just a little bit, maybe it's, it presents a, a good opportunity to refi. We missed a great opportunity uh, before interest rates started rising to refinance uh, a lot of these properties. But hey, we're here now and we need to know what loans are maturing, what is the current principal balance, what, uh, um, what's the current monthly payment, is this principal and interest, is this interest only? I want to be able to look at one, one spreadsheet, one page on a software and see this for every single one of our properties. I wanna know what the property management fee is. I wanna know what the current rents are. I wanna know what market rents are. How much uh, lower or higher are we with current rents versus market rents? How many units do we have vacant and why are they vacant? Uh, is, are they currently listed for lease and they're listed too high? Do we need to lower uh, the the lease price? Um, do they need to have uh, make readies or renovations done? If so, why are they not started? And when can we start those? And what do we need to uh, prepare for those? How much money do we need to prepare to put into these units uh, to get the property ready to lease out? For these leases, um, when is the lease expiring? Uh, when are they coming up for renewals? How much can we push uh, these lease renewals up uh, to try and get them at market if they're below market. Uh, if, you know, what is the, the delta there between the unit's current condition with the tenant living in there, the current market rent, I mean, the current rents that it's getting, what we want to renew that tenant at, which would be slightly higher, 
hopefully. Um, and what is market rent for a, a condition of a market uh, market rent unit? And how much money is required to bring that unit up to market rent condition to get market rents? And if we put that money into it, how much, uh, based on how much more we'll be getting at market rents, we'll be getting paid back that investment that we're putting into the property. Uh, I want to know what the management fee is. What is our insurance premium? And uh, is this the best insurance premium that we can get? How can we lower that down? Um, property taxes. What is our property tax amount? Is this being escrowed with the loans that we have in place? If it's hard money, the answer is no. And we have to uh, prepare to pay these property tax payments coming up in... 30 days, I think, is the uh, deadline to make those tax payments. Uh, property tax payments for 89 units is quite a bit. It's going to be about 100 and I think just our portion of some of the properties that we own with, with partners is going to be uh, approximately like $127,000. So we need to prepare for that as opposed to January 1st being told, hey, you, you got $127,000 due for property taxes. Then we've got all the bookkeeping for all these entities. Um, you know, 89 units split up into different entities with different partners, um, different entities that just Matt and I own together, own different properties. And uh, it's about to be calendar year end. So that means that it's time for taxes. So now the CPA is going to want to know... Um, you know, where our books are. They're going to want bank statements for uh, every month for each entity. They're going to want property management statements for every month for each property and or entity. <clears throat> uh, they're going to want mortgage statements. Out of these uh, mortgage statements, how many, you know, what percentage is, is going to interest? What percentage is going to principal? Um, if we are doing cost segregation studies, uh, for depreciation on the properties, we need to get those scheduled. Uh, the cost seg guys, they're going to want to have an appraisal if possible. They're going to want, uh, pictures of the property. They're going to want all these things, um, every month. So that's just the record keeping and organization, uh, side of things. And if you don't know any of those numbers, and if you don't know, uh, this about your real estate investments, then you can't really make informed decisions uh, on what is best for the property, what's best for the entity, what's best for cash flow and for the investment to generate the best return possible. Uh, for example, we've got a triplex in uh, just north of Taylor and we have to pay property taxes in two counties. Uh, Andrew checked up on this for me on Friday, and we can't avoid that. The property tax uh, payment for both counties total is about $13,000. So any cash flow that we would have gotten is gone uh, from, from, this, uh, from this property tax payment. It's ridiculous. So, you know, if the property taxes are going to continue to increase over time and it's just going to continue to eat all of our cash flow, uh, and if the property is not appreciate, appreciating at an amount that's, you know, substantially more than what the property taxes and maintenance and management and everything else is eating out of our cash flow and market rents, then maybe it's time to sell it. Maybe we could get a better return elsewhere. And we take a, a you know, we analyze each property in this way and figure out how to maximize the return, how to maximize the investment and how to make the most money possible with each investment we make. But it's impossible to make these decisions if you don't know uh, or if we don't know any of the information. And prior to, um, you know, recently, like I said, we were solely focused on buy more deals, buy more deals, buy more deals. Uh, we were not, uh, we we're, we we're just doing this in a reactive fashion. So, Anytime something would come up, we would react to it. We weren't doing this proactively uh, to maximize the investment, which uh, we've changed and, and we've started approaching our investments in, in this way. Um, 
So there's that. That's the organization side, the tax side, the analysis side to figure out what is best for the properties. Uh, it's also never good to assume that your property manager will be uh, doing the best things possible for the properties. Um, they don't own the property. You own the property. Um, and just because the property manager uh, does a good job and they do their best to reduce expenses, they uh, do their best to get market rents, they do their best to, uh, you know, get as much as they can on renewals. Um, it doesn't mean that they may make the best decisions for you and your properties, your objectives and your goals um, all the time. They don't own the property. You own the property. And if you uh, want to ensure that your properties are being managed properly, then it's a, a good idea for you to know what your property manager is doing. So every month we have a, we have a couple of property managers. Uh, we manage some in house. And then we also uh, have a company that manages a small uh, apartment complex for us in Lano. Um, and every month on the 15th. So come, I guess, Thursday, Thursday, the 15th. So on Thursday of this week, uh, after the reports have been finalized for the full month of November, after owner draws have been sent out for the month of December with all collected rent payments um, for this month, I meet with them and we go over the uh, income statement and the owner statement. And we look at every single line item. So, and I look at it from a, a, a trailing perspective of what have we done for the previous months? What do we do this month? And why, <clears throat> you know, if, uh, if we collected 50% of the rent that we normally do, uh, we collected that this month versus the previous months. Uh, I'd like to know why, why we did that. Are five of the tenants late? Uh, did five get evicted? Did five move out? What happened? Where's the money? Why, why do we not have, uh, our money and what are we doing to collect that money? Uh, from the tenants? Have we given notices? Are we charging late fees? Where's the money at? Um, and we go down every line item in the income statement and the owner statements. And I want to see what income we received and why. Uh, I want to see what we spent money on and why. Uh, what could we have done to reduce expenses? Uh, did we hit our budgets? Are we on budget? Uh, does everything look good? Does it not look good? Why not? Um, based on all the rent that was collected, based on all the expenses that we have incurred, uh, this is the amount that adds up to what we should be paid out as an owner draw. Did what we received match that or not? Why or why not? Um, and we run through, we have a meeting, we check out the statements, we review the statements together. It's a good opportunity for them to uh, speak to me and say, hey, we've got these lease renewals coming up, or hey, this tenant gave us notice and they're moving out January 1st. How do you want to handle the make ready? Uh, what do you want to try and get for rents? It's a great opportunity for me to meet with the property managers to discuss what we got coming up, to discuss the previous month's performance, uh, and just to provide solutions so that we can work together as a team to manage this asset and the property uh, in the best way possible. It's not a uh, session to sit down and micromanage in any way, um, but there is accountability there if um, things are not matching up regarding the financials. And more importantly, it's uh, an opportunity for us to get together as a team and discuss the best path, path forward, discuss any solutions that need to be uh, addressed or come up with, and to just all get on the same page. Uh, we have a property management company in-house, we manage our own properties. Um, and I still do this with, uh, with our property manager who oversees the property management company and who oversees the property management of our assets. Every single month, we review everything, we come together as a team, and we discuss you know, the best path forward. So those are a, a few things that I got so far. Uh, I'd be curious to know if anybody has any questions um, at this time before diving into what we got coming next.
What just talk to me? What? Any questions? What do we got right here? Instagram? How many people on Instagram? Five. Instagram, where, where are you tuning in from? And this TikTok? How many people on TikTok? A lot. All right. No questions. So good records. You want to know all your numbers at all times. Uh, there shouldn't be a reason why uh, you don't know any of the numbers with your assets or with your properties. You should know them at all times. You should be able to log in or pull up the spreadsheet, however you're tracking it, see all the numbers and have an accurate picture of what you've got going on. Um, second is work very closely with the property management company. Um, the property management companies, we can talk about the division of roles there. The property management company is responsible for onboarding our properties, getting the properties leased, collecting rents from our properties, uh, all communication with tenants, dealing with any maintenance requests that come in from our properties, working with the contractors and subcontractors to get those out, um, renewing the tenants uh, at our properties, and they oversee the day-to-day -day of collecting rents, tenant communication, maintenance requests, make readies, um, and things like that. And that's about where property management responsibilities end and asset management responsibilities start. So that's where we come in with taxes, uh, getting with property management on, you know, the best financial path forward for these entities, for this property, what our objectives are, what we're looking to accomplish. And every, ind every uh, investor may be different, right? Like some investors may be solely focused on cash flow. We want cash flow. <clears throat> we need cash flow. That is the most important metric of our return is cash flow. Uh, some investors may say we want the nicest properties possible. We want to put as much money as we possibly can into each unit. We want to push market rents. It's okay if we sit vacant for three months on one unit so long as we get a good tenant who's paying uh, a high price in an extremely uh, renovated unit. And that investor's goals, that investor's goals is going to be different than the cash flow investor's goal. Um, so it depends on what your goal is, what you're looking to do. And you need to communicate this to the property manager. That way they can do their job and execute the business plan on the management side. Uh, it's your job as an asset manager to uh, work the debt. So property management is not going to try and get us the best loan possible. Their job is to manage the property and the tenants and the contractors. It's your job uh, to manage the debt. So we have 89 units that we own together. Uh, that means that um, each, uh, it means that uh, each property probably has a different loan. We have some properties that have uh, a portfolio loan. Uh, but we've got a tremendous amount of loans, like 40 different loans. That means on the first of the month, there's 40 different mortgage payments coming out. Uh, are these all set up on auto pay? Sometimes we have, uh, we use same hard money lenders uh, for, you know, of course, for buying properties. And they assume for whatever reason, we fill out the documents at closing, but more often than not, uh, these loan processors pull mortgage payments from the wrong accounts. You know, just because we own three properties under this entity with this connected bank account uh, and we started a new entity buying this property and we're using the same lender, it doesn't mean that this property's mortgage is coming out of this existing uh, account and bank account. We have to set all that up, make sure they're on auto pay, make sure... It's kind of chaos. It, it Sometimes it is. The first of the month, when things aren't organized, it was. Uh, where it's the first of the month, and I'm trying to figure out, did all of these mortgages get taken out of the correct accounts? And if they did, then how that money needs, or if they didn't, and it got taken out of an incorrect account, we need to figure out how to get that money back into the right account. We need to contact the loan servicer. 
We need to tell them that they made a mistake. We need to try and get it corrected. We need to update it in their system. And then the following month, we have to make sure that the correct loan came out of the correct place. And so it's a little bit uh, chaos if it's not uh, organized and all streamlined. But, you know, these hard money loans, uh, some of them we got at good rates. You know, last year we were getting hard money loans at 7.99, uh, 8.2% interest, interest only loans. And that's about market for for rates right now. Um, and so, or it was the last couple of months. And so uh, if we were to try and DSCR or if we were to go get a new hard money loan today and it was 10, 11, 12%, we do not want to hold on to those loans for a long period of time. They're just eating away all of our cash flow. And we would want to refi out of those into better debt. Uh, thankfully, we did refi into some good long term loans. Uh, but we have quite a bit that we need to refi out into longer term debt right now. And here's the other thing. So refining all these properties is a whole process too. You got to, you know, create the pro for the, for the lenders. They want to know, uh, you know, they want to hit at least a 1.2, uh, 1.25 DSCR, uh, debt service, uh, coverage ratio, meaning that our rent income is servicing the debt at least 1.2, 1.25 times. Um, and with the higher rates, that means that the debt has gotten more expensive. Therefore, uh, the debt is a lot harder to service uh, than it was the last couple of years. So we have to work through that, make adjustments where needed, um, and try and find a good loan product uh, to get us into cheaper debt, to improve the performance of the asset, and to uh, ensure more cash flow for our investments. So I'm going to write a few things out for you guys. If you can, drop some comments uh, in the chat and let me know what you're thinking. Anybody in here, I got Facebook and YouTube in front of me. Do you own any real estate? And what are you currently doing? to uh to manage your assets and to manage the property managers and same with you instagram and same with you tiktok who's responsible for this Andrew, are you watching? No questions? All right, well, I'm going to ask you a question. I want some answers. So how do you know uh, if you have a portfolio of properties, are you going to – and I don't know the answer to this for, for you guys. I'm just curious. Uh, but how do you uh, determine when to sell? Do you hold on to these for forever no matter what? Or is there a point in time where you sell certain properties uh, and don't sell others? How do you determine as a real estate investor, long-term buy and hold real estate investor, when to sell properties? What do you think? What's your answer? When they don't own Okay. Who said that? Chris Sweeney. What's your goal, Chris Sweeney? Is that on Instagram, TikTok? Chris Sweeney turning in from TikTok. We own some properties with Chris Sweeney.
Uh, we own six. We own 12, 12 units with Chris Sweeney. Working on finalizing six of those 12 currently. We're almost there. Just got to transfer the deeds. What else? All right, here's what I got. I think it's backwards. I don't think it shows what. It's backwards. I don't think it is. It's backwards here. Oh, well. Next, next time, we got the mirror, mirror image. I wrote down just bullet points. You can leave it. Uh, organization of financials is really important. At any day, any time, you want to know uh, how your properties are performing. It's impossible for you to make educated decisions on the uh, performance of your properties, how to anything, uh, if you don't know what the financials are. Uh, manage the property managers. Don't assume that they're doing the best they can. Verify they're doing the best that they can. Team up with the property managers. Uh, see about what you can do to uh, help provide solutions, help provide insight into what your goals are. Uh, they, they have a lot of decisions that they have to make on a daily and monthly basis. And the more you're involved, even on a, you know, just a monthly level, meeting up with them and discussion and discussing, uh, you know, the best path forward, what your goals are, what you'd like to see done, uh, the better they can do their job. So team up with them, don't micromanage them, uh, but hold them accountable. Uh, number three is get better debt whenever you can and wherever it makes sense and wherever it aligns with your goals, uh, get better debt. Um, like I said, right now, if anybody's out buying properties right now and two years from now, interest rates drop, might be a good time to refinance into some better debt. Uh, refinances are good opportunities to, uh, increase some net income for you. Uh, also, depending on what uh, the valuation of the property looks like compared to when you bought it, um, it might be a good opportunity for you to even keep the debt payment the same, but pull out some cash, some equity that you have in the deal. Uh, but always look for opportunities to get some better debt on your properties. And then lastly, uh, you know, um, make decisions on when to sell. Matt and I have never sold a long-term buy and hold investment that we bought. Uh, we've sold flips and wholesale a lot of deals and things like that, but we've never sold a long-term buy and hold rental or duplex, quadplex, uh, apartment complex that we own. Um, you know, we plan on or planned on holding onto these for forever, but you know, maybe that's not the best way. Maybe, uh, at some point in the future, we make a decision on, Hey, it makes sense to sell this property now, or maybe we sell, you know, 20 of these units and 1031 into this deal over there. Um, so always be looking for opportunities to, uh, to sell the property, uh, when it makes sense to. And if you approach it in this way, and if you manage your assets in this way, uh, you'll always have a good pulse on how they're doing, what they're doing, and um, you'll be able to uh, make the best decisions possible to, to uh, you know, get the best performance you possibly can. I mean, this is our business. This is not uh, something that we just own like one rental and we'll just have one rental for the rest of our life. This is our business. We buy real estate. Uh, we are real estate investors. And we have to approach it this way. And the larger and larger our portfolio gets, uh, the more it's going to be required and the more uh, systems and processes and everything, uh, they're all going to be required uh, to ensure, you know, it's efficient and it's performing and we're getting what we need when we need it. So we have to approach it this way. Uh, but I tell you, it uh, relieves a tremendous amount of uh, anxiety from me when I do approach it this way, when I oversee our assets like this, 
uh, and I have a good pulse on every single property, every single loan, every single insurance pos- uh, policy, uh, the property managers, uh, all the financials, the property taxes, everything. Um, it, it gives me peace of mind knowing uh, exactly what's happening, why it's happening, what we got coming up and what we need to do to do better, fix it, or what we need to do in order to keep it at peak performance. So that's asset management and the importance of asset management. I, uh, I don't have much else there, but would love to answer some questions. Uh, if you have anything, I'm going to click this, uh, caption thing, call in with your questions, uh, down. You, you guys can't see it, but call in if you want to 512 517. One three six zero. Give me a call if you want. We can talk through it. Push your questions in the chat. If not, we'll wrap up here in just a moment. Any questions? Roy, you get any deals? All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next week. We're going to talk about how to analyze a deal. And we'll analyze it from uh, this viewpoint that we talked about today. Till then, see you next time.